Hey, my name is Mark. I'm a developer advocate from Prisma, and I wanted to take a moment to introduce this video to you guys. This video is a segment from one of our most recent live streams where we talk about client extensions, what they are, how you guys can use them, and then Sabin, another developer advocate at Prisma, builds one on stream for you guys. If you ever wanted to extend the power of your Prisma client, say you just want one field from a find menu and you just want it back in an array. You don't want to have to map through that once you get the response from the Prisma client and do that in your code every single time. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just pass in an individual field to that find menu and then a response would come back with just an array of that field. In this video, Saban is going to teach you how to do that. I'm excited to see what you guys do with client extensions. Please don't hesitate to tag us in any of the cool things that you guys make. Until next time, from everybody at Prisma, keep making awesome stuff. Client extensions are just a powerful tool to be able to add custom functionality to your Prisma client. And not just to like adding functions to your Prisma client, but you can also manipulate the responses of queries. You can manipulate the client itself rather than the individual functions on each model. There's a bunch of different ways you can actually extend and manipulate the Prisma client that gives you the flexibility to pretty much do whatever you want. It's like if you used middlewares before, those are being deprecated now. And the reason those are being deprecated is because client extensions covers everything that middlewares could do and a significant amount more. So there's just a lot you can do with these. Let me let me clarify. Middleware is not going away. We would just highly recommend you use client extensions over middleware. I would think it's just a better API and, and does everything that middleware does and more. But the way that I like to think about client extensions and sort of this this way of tailoring uh, the Prisma client to your specific needs is middleware because I come from a, a backend development background. And so when I'm working with Node Express, using Node and Express without middleware is a nightmare. And so like middleware unlocks so many cool things you can do and, and makes your life so much easier. And, and we really hope that, well, I know and hope that Prisma client extensions will unlock that same level of usefulness in folks' code bases. So to start the extension off, what we're going to do is go into here and we're gonna export a default function. And what this function is going to export is we have this helper called Prisma Find Extension. And within this function, you can actually get an instance of a future client, whatever client your extension is extending. And then you can return a client with the extends keyword. So does that allow you to daisy chain extensions if you'd like to? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, and that's another actual use case that I've thought about for, for an extension is just an extension to even more easily daisy chain these by just passing like an array of extensions and you can have it loop through. For the function that we're going to build, we have a couple different options here. If we look at the, the options, we have client, model, query, result. Name is just a way to name your extension, which I, I won't worry about for now. These all allow you to do different things to your client. And for us, what we're going to be doing with this extension is updating the model. And actually, in our case, it'll be updating every model that Prisma has. And when I say model, I mean, if you do Prisma dot, I'll show you here, Prisma dot, we have these post and user models. It's going to be for every one of those models that we're extending. And we have a nice keyword to help you do that. You can choose post, user, or you can do all models. And that's what we're going to be going for. Within here, you don't get any really type options to choose from, and that's because this is where you can add your own functions. So it's allowing you to put in any sort of options for you there. I think it's super, super important to sort of like note here is that within all models, your your type safety is lost a little bit because Prisma can't know, especially if you're doing something like Saban's doing right now, you're defining the distinction for all possible schemas. And so it's it's very, very difficult to determine typing within all models. And so we are sacrificing a little bit of type safety within this all models call to guarantee you type safety outside of it. And, and that's a good point to make because when, when I first go through this, it's gonna be sort of a dumb extension. We're going to make it work, but then afterwards I'm going to show some of like the Prisma utility types that we can use to make these type safe in a generic way to any model. Okay, so to add a new function to all models, what we're gonna do is I'll add an async function called get values. So this defines the function. This now says that every single model should have another function called get values along with find many, find unique, all of those other ones. So this is gonna to need to take in a couple of things. The very first thing 
is field. So this will be a string. What this field is going to be is the actual name of the field that you want to pick out of your query results and loop through. And then we also want a where, which will be just a Prisma filter for the find many function. That way you can filter out your query and then pick the pieces out. Yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and type these now. So stop yelling at me. At this point, we now have a function where you can give it the field you want and the filter to run on the query. The next piece is something that uses one of our Prisma utilities, and that just allows you to get the context of the Prisma client that happens to be using this extension. And that may not make sense yet, what I just said, but it will in just a second. So what this does is it allows you to grab the extension that happens to be calling this new function you're adding to it, and it returns that extension's object structure, basically, so that you can perform its operations within this function. This allows you to use the Prisma client using the extension and run, for example, the find many function, which is what we're gonna do with it. If you want to see that in action, I'm gonna create a new const called result, and it's gonna be equal to await, and I'll say context as any. And this is just that because we can't really get the type of the Prisma client that's calling this extension because like John said, it could be any client with any sort of model, but that doesn't really hurt us too much as far as type safety goes here, because all we really need to do is run the find many function. And here we'll pass in the where clause that we got from the function arguments up here. And we'll pass in a select. And this select is going to be, we want to pass in the field that we passed into the function and just say true. What we're doing right now is we're grabbing the context of the Prisma client that invoked this function. We're using that context to run find many with the where clause we passed in. And then we're saying only select the field that we passed into the function argument. So so that's kind of the cool thing about Prisma client extensions and, and that get extension context line specifically is so so you're extending a Prisma client within this, but the extension has the like reference to the existing client. So you're still like reaching out of your own like extension and like grabbing the client and then doing things with it. Essentially any operation you can do with a standard Prisma client, you could do in here. So in this example where we're getting values and doing a select essentially, but I don't want to say the possibilities are endless because that's pretty cliche, but like <laughs> it really does feel that way. It, it really does feel like if you have a very specific use case, you can do this and you can make your own extension. It looks like Copilot here has what I was going to write anyway, so I'll just use that. It's mapping through all of the query results. Find many is going to return an array of users or posts or whatever you call this on. So I'm just going to map through all of those and pick out the field that we specified and throw it into a new array. So it's going to be an array of whatever field you wanted. So that's the extension. At this point, this would kind of work. Logically, it's going to work. It's going to grab all your records, pick out those pieces of data. But the thing is, the type is strange right now. It's expecting a user where input, which is not going to work if you wanted to do this with like the, the post field. And I, I'm just going to go ahead and show this so that we can see it in action and see why we need these these types. What I did here, I just imported the extension that I wrote, and then I used the extends keyword and passed it in. Um, and that's how you extend the Prisma client there. So now I should be able to go into prisma.user. Now, as I mentioned before, we have this get values function, and that'll be the same if we did this on post. We should have get values as well because we extended all models. So it's going to get values. I'll pass it. Um, we'll say an email. And then here, if we look at the type safety we have right now, it's going to show us a where filter, or I guess the types for a where filter for the user model. That's not what we want because we could be doing a post. And then an even more difficult one to consider is that within this post, the post table doesn't have a column called email. What I would expect when running this uh, or when writing this is that this should have a red squiggly line under it because there's no email field to even pull out of this. With some of the magic Prisma types that we have, we can actually get that working. In order to actually do this, we need to have sort of a generic type up here. And I'll just call that T. And what that's gonna represent is the type of the Prisma client that is using this extension. And we can denote that here using this, I guess, this argument. This gets passed into every JavaScript function as the initial argument. It's normally left out. If you leave it out, it just gets passed and inferred, but you can also define it explicitly explicitly if you want to be sure of the type there. Next, we could tackle the type of the where filter. I think that's one of the bigger ones here. So this piece here, what we want this to be is the type of a where filter on any model that you're calling this function on. And that's where this T type is gonna come in. 
This represents the current model that you're using. And what we can do is we actually have a helper in the Prisma namespace called args. And what you can do with this is you can pass in basically the type of a model and specify a function. So you get some type safety here with that. I'm gonna pick the find many. So this is gonna say that we want this where class to be the type of the arguments you pass to whatever model you're using to find many function. And we specifically wanna pull out the where object that you can pass into this. With just that, we should now see that on post, we have ID, published, title, author. If we switch this over to user, now we see post, name, email, and all of that. That's the type to do that there. The thing about these types that I will say, and this is not a permanent thing, but I don't know if these are like explicitly documented anywhere. Yeah, so this concept of type safety within your extensions is really, really critical. And we recognize that, you know, line 10 there for a lay person might just kind of seem like gibberish. And so we, we are really trying to expand our documentation to make stuff like that easy. So, so yeah, in this, it's just saying T is any model, find many is the operation on that model, and then where is the clause you're selecting. The next one we want to do is the, uh, is the field. And just to reiterate what we're doing here, we want to only be able to pass in a field that actually exists on the model as a query result. So the way we can do that is we have something similar to this prisma.args, except it's called prisma.result. Over here, I'm gonna do prisma.result, and we'll pass in t as well, which is the context of the model that you're, uh, that you're running this against. This actually takes in three arguments. The second one is the type of the object you're passing in to the, to the select statement of this function. For now, we'll leave this null, and then the name of the function that you're actually invoking. This null piece, I wanna elaborate on this a little bit. When you do a find many, you're gonna pass in a select statement where you pick out the individual fields that you want from your model and you only return those as your query results. This represents that object that you would pass in because we only want to allow you to pull fields that are available uh, in that model. I'm leaving this null because this allows this field type to be any of the fields that you could possibly pull from the model because we're not really running a select in here other than that one field that we want. And just to show what that means and why is this complaining? So find many, <laughs> here, here's, here's one thing too. Find many returns an array. We want to represent the type of just the first index of the array so that we can get the fields out. Uh, that messes me up usually. So now what we're gonna see in here is if we look at the types, this should still be broken. So I have like a, a project that I did this on before. Uh, just, to, just to explain what I did here, I moved the Prisma result up here into another generic just to keep it out of the arguments to clean it up a little bit. What I'm missing here is I need a key of because what this is going to return is an object, the, the type of an object, a bunch of different keys in it. And we don't want this field argument to be an object. We just want it to be one of the keys in this type object. So we're saying that you can only pass in a string that matches any of the keys in the first array index of the query results. So it's a little bit of a complicated type. If you sort of understand what this piece here does, it, begins to make a little bit more sense. We're drilling into the first index and selecting all the keys out of that object. So now if we go back over to here and control space, we should see email, ID, name. These are the only options we're allowed to pass into this. And then if we go over to post, it should change. Now we have author ID, content ID, published and title. And then just to sort of wrap this up, the response of this function is any. We're not really uh, defining the response type and we can do better. We can change that. So what we want to do is we want to say that the result from our query that we run right here when we do the find many should be K. And just to remind you, K represents the results of the find many function with nothing being passed into the select filter. So now we can remove this any here. We know that this will be an index of K. So it'll represent this. And then we're selecting out the field. So if we go back over to our script now, we should see that this represents a string, number, boolean, or null, and it'll be an array. And that's exactly what we want. Those are the possible values that Prisma client can return from a query.
And to wrap this up, I'll console.log, the data we get, let's just say we're pulling out the, from the user model, pulling out the emails, and I'll run this. And here we could see it actually worked. We just got an array of email addresses. We didn't have to map over. This was honestly a pretty simple extension, but it gets a little hairy with these types. So this is probably one of the more uh, like, uh, I don't know, involved examples with these types here, but I wanted to make sure to show. To show well, yeah, I mean, it shows the power of what you can do. And this is just like the beginning of it too. And yeah, I think it would be really helpful if we made this a repo statement, if you up uploaded this as yeah. like an example somewhere so people could use it. I mean, I, I would use it in my own project and I, now I don't have to write it. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs>